conservative new media viewers, Jeremy Lin fans around the world, LA Lakers fans around the world. What's up? It's me, PFE, Paul F. of the Riel, the happy NBA expert, and we're here to discuss the Lakers' 118-111 to 111 overtime victory tonight against their bitter rivals, the Boston Celtics. I still got to keep it under control because it's late. And yes, as Anderson, who mentioned the baby next door to me, is sleeping. I'm quite sure of that. Uh, At least she was until I started making this video. Look, this game was freaking fantastic on every single possible front. It was an exciting game. This is the two most successful teams in the history of the NBA, the two most successful franchises. Every time these teams play, there's it's like there's ghost on the floor 15, 60 years ago because there's so much history between these two teams. The game was fun. It was exciting. It was the Lakers almost blew it at the end of uh, regulation. And Jeremy Lin went nuts in this game. And I said it on Twitter. I'm not trying to pat my own back here, but you could see this coming with him because of the progress he is making as a player. I'm telling you, there is significant progress he is making in his learning curve as an NBA player and as an L.A. Laker in this offense. This was a fantastic game. The only thing I wish is that this game didn't have to go up against the Oscars because tonight is Grammy Awards, the Oscars in L.A., so a lot of people didn't see this game. Well, maybe they did see the end of it because the end of it was probably after the Oscars ended. So it was a a fun night all around in L.A. uh, for anybody watching this game. Another thing I want to say about this, and this is for the Jeremy Lin fans, and I mean no disrespect to people who are a fan of this individual. Another thing that made this night great was that Floyd Mayweather was in the house. And if you know the history between Floyd Mayweather and Jeremy Lin, not a lot of love lost there, at least between what Floyd has said about Jeremy. Look, Floyd says things for effect. He says things as uh, to get uh, attention to get PR for himself. So uh, he might like Jeremy Lin a lot, but maybe he just says things because that's his public persona. Whatever it is, I can tell you this. If you watch our videos or if you watch the Lakers games closely, there was a game earlier this year in L.A., and I don't remember who it was against, and Floyd Mayweather was there, and they caught Floyd Mayweather on the microphone, and he was basically trash-talking Jeremy Lin even though Jeremy Lin's a Laker and and they're playing at Staples Center. You could hear Floyd talking smack about Jeremy right there, right right at the game and right on the microphone. So I'm happy for Jeremy Lin because not only did he go nuts in this game, but he did it in front of Floyd Mayweather, who was an old tormentor. Before I get more to the game, let me just say this about Jeremy Lin. Okay, and this is for the people that didn't get to watch the long video or of, of the uh, Nets game. What Jeremy Lin is beginning to do, and this is important, so I'm going to say it now, like I said, for people that don't get to watch the whole video or don't get to watch the long video, I'll also, let me say this too. I might not make the long video for a while. In fact, I might not be able to make it until tomorrow. There's a couple things I got to get done tonight that, that uh, really can't wait. So I'll just try to put some stuff in there, but I will make a long video about this game at some point. So here's what you need to know. Jeremy Lin, since the Denver game, so between the Denver game and the Portland game, somehow he got it into his head or the light switch kind of turned on in his head that he's got to step back a little bit on offense. And I mean that in a good way. Don't try to do too much. Work in the flow. Work within the offense. And it's one of those, it's it's kind of like a, 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 it's almost like a paradox. Like the, the saying, the expression, slow down to speed up. What that means is 
relax a little bit, chill out, and then things will go faster. Things will go better for you. And that's what Jeremy's starting to do. Rather than trying to control the offense continually or always being aggressive or always feeling like he has to be the savior. And I'm only saying that because Jeremy used that expression when he was in Houston. He felt like he had to be the savior of Houston basketball. When you can just be a guy and just play within the offense, within the rhythm of the game, the expression is let the game come to you. Let it come to you. Let it go in the flow. Then you can play much better. It's almost like finding your zen, finding your nirvana, finding your happy place in your mind. And that's what's starting to happen for him. I saw it in the Portland game. I saw it in the Brooklyn game. And it happened tonight. And look, in the Brooklyn game, he was the leading scorer for the Lakers. He played great, but he didn't force anything. And tonight, same thing. He didn't force anything. He was the leading scorer of the Lakers and the leading scorer in the game. He led the team to the win. And he did all of his damage in, in two quarters and overtime. I mean, he, he hardly even played. He didn't play in the first quarter. He only played one minute in the third quarter. So everything he did, all 25 points that he scored in this game, came in uh, 30 minutes, two quarters, plus overtime, five minutes, and one minute of the third quarter. So there's time you don't have to press. And this is a significant developmental step for Jeremy Lind. And this is the same thing many players have to go through this. You can see it in Jordan Clarkson. He wants to force everything. It's almost like like he's anxious. You got to make things happen. Got to make things happen. Uh, once you can slow down, then it all starts to work. That's what's starting to happen for Jeremy Lin in these last three games. It's not a finished product. I know Spurs Diva was telling me on Twitter he's inconsistent. This is the key to overcoming the inconsistency is playing this way. And it was masterful tonight. Masterful. It was sweet. Stats. 25 points, zero rebounds, six assists for Jeremy Lin. He played 30 minutes, 10 of 15 shooting from the field, one of three from the three-point range, four of six free throws, one steal, zero block shots, only one turnover, four personal fouls, plus minus was a plus 11. Six assist, one turnover. 25 points. 25 points on 67% field goal shooting and a 6 to 1 assist to turnover ratio. That, I mean, you can't play any better than that. Not only is that Lin Sanity, that's Lin Sanity Plus. Because in Lin Sanity, he would turn the ball over a fair amount. He's really, truly starting to reach the next level as a player. I'm going to tell you guys this, though, right now, though. This is, it's going to take time for this. It's going to take time. I'm not saying, this doesn't mean all of a sudden he's going to transform and next week he's going to be a completely different player. I still am of the opinion that it's going to take him a year or two more to really put it all together. And hopefully he can find a team and a coach and a situation and a system where he can do that, where he can feel good, feel comfortable, not have to worry about anything and not have to worry about his role. And then he can really, he can further nurture what he's starting to figure out right now. Give him two years. Two years, if he keeps on this path, he keeps working on his three-point shooting, I mean, it's going to be something to see. I don't care what his role is. As I said, sure, I want him to start. It's like Manu Ginobili. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if Manu starts. He can come in and do damage. If Jeremy plays like this, he's going to be a serious force in the NBA. He's capable of it. And tonight he showed it. As I said on Twitter as well, 
The Lakers scored 12 points in the overtime period, and Jeremy Lin accounted for 10 of them. And I should say the first 10 of them, because only two of them were at the very end where the game was already won. Wayne Ellington hit two free throws once Boston fouled him because they had to foul him to stop the clock to try to catch up, but it was already too late. So all of the meaningful points that were scored in overtime by the Lakers were directly because of Jeremy Lin. And one other thing I want to say about him, and I know I apologize to Lakers fans because this is all about Jeremy Lin, but, but this has to be done. He never, there was only one possession I saw in this game where he over dribbled and just you know, dribbled too much or dribbled out a whole possession at just one. And it, I don't know, it really kind of maybe took a three pointer or something. It wasn't a great shot. It, the defense was good, though. Even in overtime and when the game was tight in the fourth quarter, instead of getting into that anxious, rushed state, he stayed disciplined. He ran the offense. He didn't force passes. He stayed calm. That's what it's all about. That's what he has to do. Whenever people like myself criticize him, he's got to turn the ball over less. We know he can play like this. And we just want him to get there. And now, because he has this success, he can look at the tape of the last three games. And the coaches can look at the tape with him and say, that's what we want you to do. Just play like that. In other words, there's no more... There's no disconnect now between the coaching staff and Jeremy. They can show him this. That's how you can play, and we know that. Play like that. Find that calm space. Look, maybe the time of the All-Star game break, time of his family, maybe kind of further solidified his confidence and calm, but this is it. This is Lin Sanity Prime. This is a better, more durable version of Linsanity, what happened tonight. This is the most exciting thing that he's done since New York. I don't care about the higher stats game than that he's had. This is sustainable. I'm not saying he's not going to shoot 67% every game. And he's not going to have a 6-1 to one turnover, assisted turnover ratio every single game. The way he played... And only in 30 minutes, this is what he can do. He can play like this, and he can play like he played in the Brooklyn game. That is sustainable. And that's what the goal is for him going forward. Work on playing like this, keeping your turnovers low, continue to work on your three-point shot. He was outstanding for most of the night on defense tonight, so his energy level was balanced between offense and defense. This is it. This is the formula. Um, like I said, I'm more happy about this game tonight than I am any game that took place after New York and now. This is it. This is the thing that needs to be bottled up and studied over and over again. That's it. Look, this was a, I said it was a fantastic game. Jeremy was being guarded by Avery Bradley in the fourth quarter in overtime. Avery Bradley is one of the best perimeter defenders in the NBA. An exceptional on-ball defender. When you have the ball and he's guarding you, he is one of the best. He's annoying and difficult, and Jeremy didn't give him anything. No turnovers, no nothing. So I, I'm just, I, I couldn't be more thrilled. I mean, this is, this is it, man. If you're a Lynn fan basking in this, this is what it's all about. And we're going to see more of this. That Again, there's still going to be some ups and downs. There's still ways to go. But this, if you didn't have hope before, you should have a whole bunch of hope after the last two games. Now we're starting to see the true Jeremy Lynn and what Jeremy Lynn is 
can become and is on his way to becoming. This is it. And I, I just, I'm thrilled. I, 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 it's, I wish I could be louder, but again, I got to be cool because of my neighbor and the kid. But I, I, it was great. He had he got a little duel with Isaiah Thomas. That's another old rival of his. Isaiah got kicked out of the game. Just a total victory. Lakers snap a seven-game losing streak. They beat the Celtics. They're still in good shape for the tank, if you're concerned about that. They're still like the fourth worst team in the league or whatever. They're fine in terms of the tank. This is a the kind of victory that makes everybody happy, puts a pep in your step. Fantastic. I, I could not be happier or more proud of the way Jeremy played tonight. He was masterful. And what's great about him tonight is he knew he had it going. He knew. He could feel it. You saw that insanity swagger, but he still played under control. Stu Lance, our old friend Stu, said it. Jeremy's under control. So keep the swagger. Still play under control. Don't play savior of L.A. basketball. Play in the flow. This is it. And I'm going to tell you, you can be sure that all of the GMs around the league are going to see tape of this game. Jeremy and his agents, when they, whenever they do for this summer, in terms of where's Jeremy going to go, and you know, he's a free agent, you can be sure that this tape, this game, is going to be prominently featured, and it should be. This is what he can do. And sanity wasn't a fluke. Sanity was the beginning. Now there's a bridge to Linsanity Prime. Linsanity Prime is a more lasting, durable, manageable version of what happened in New York. And there's, it's going to take time to get there. But now Jeremy's on the bridge. Before the, almost this entire season, he wasn't on the bridge. He didn't know where the bridge was. And I'm not saying that's all his fault. The last three years have been chaotic for him. Now he's on the bridge. The bridge is leading over over the troubled waters over to Insanity Prime. That's it. I just, I mean, that's it. It's, you know, it's just amazing, man. I'm just so pumped up. I can't wait to watch this game again. I got league passing, so you can watch it whenever you want. I mean, it's just incredible, just amazing, just phenomenal performance, great leadership. This is it. This is the way you play. I remember in the Denver game, I'm like, you can't play like this. I said that on Twitter tonight. This is exactly how you should play. Everybody has said that knows anything about basketball. Jeremy's so talented. He has so much ability with the kind of the 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 unsaid but dot, dot, dot there. How do we get him to play right? How do we get him to not be in the 29 points, nine turnovers, McHale version? This is how. And Kobe, I got to give Kobe credit because he said it. Jeremy's just got to learn it for himself. He's got to work through it and figure it out. And now he's starting to figure it out. Now... He's starting to figure it out. So, league, be afraid. Doubters, be afraid. But we're not going to. We're not putting any pressure on Jeremy. Just stay chill. One foot in front of the other. One day at a time. But tonight was a significant step forward for Jeremy Lin. He put the league on notice tonight. I'm here. I'm back. This is real. Get ready. So that's it, man. Great, great victory. I will be doing a long video. Hang in for that. Again, that might come not come until tomorrow, but terrific win. Great job by everybody, not just Jeremy. Nick Young, Wesley Johnson were huge in this game. Ronnie Price did turn the momentum with his defense in this game, I thought. Great team win. Love it. I just, I, I'm just, I couldn't be more happy. So that is it for now. Thumbs up, thumbs down. Your comments below. We will put information in the video description so you can go check out highlights of this game. Also, thank you to Gary Chen of the Jeremy Only Lynn Garden for the artwork you're looking at now. Jeremy's, Jeremy's, 
Gary is a blogger and artist in Taiwan. And obviously, he's very talented, as you can see by his work here. The Jeremy Only Lynn Garden Group is a as a fan club of people that are based in Taiwan, but they're members all over the, the uh, all over the globe. And the commonality for them is they all speak Chinese, uh, Mandarin language. So uh, we encourage you to come follow us on Twitter and come and join the Conservative New Media Facebook group. You'll find information for that also in the video description below the video player. Once again, I am PFV Paula Filariel, the NBA expert. A just a amazing night. A m- amazing night. Given everything that's happened, I think this is the best night for Jeremy since New York. You could look at the Portland game that he pretty much won by himself in the playoffs last year. That was a f- fantastic night. But I, I, this is just, this is perfect. This is great. This is probably for me, this was my favorite night since Lent Sanity. And I think this is the start of a lot of good things to come. I, again, be patient with him. It's not all going to happen immediately. This is the truth. This is the real, unvarnished Jeremy Lin. And it's just starting to happen. Caterpillar to butterfly, just beginning. So I love it. Thanks a lot for watching Conservative New Media. Hope you're having a great night, a great day, wherever you are around the world. This short video is now over 20 minutes, so... Hopefully, uh, you guys are still around and still hanging in there and enjoying it. So take care. We will talk to you again soon.